Sometime back, I received, in the name of our country, the bodies of four Marines who had died while on active duty. I said then that there is a special sadness that accompanies the death of a serviceman, for we're never quite good enough to them. Not really, we can't be, because what they gave us is beyond our powers to repay. And so when a serviceman dies, it's a tear in the fabric, a break in the hole, and all we can do is remember. It is, in a way, an odd thing to honor those who died in defense of our country, in defense of us, in wars far away. The imagination plays a trick. We see these soldiers in our mind as old and wise. We see them as something like the founding fathers, grave and gray-haired. But most of them were boys when they died, and they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. When they died, they gave up their chance to be husbands and fathers and grandfathers. They gave up their chance to be revered old men. They gave up everything for our country, for us. We owe them a debt we can never repay. All we can do is remember them and what they did and why they had to be brave for us. I'd like to welcome you today to the Mount Carmel Church, our morning worship service. This Memorial Day weekend, which is a great weekend as families get together. It's really, as many said, and I heard it many times this week, it is a weekend of the start of, of summer. And uh, we just are praising God for this weekend. And as we think of that, I, I just want to help us to not forget <clears throat> To realize and to understand, we want to thank all those that may be watching or listening that serve this great country, both men and women who many times gave of their lives, gave of their time for that freedom that we so richly enjoy. And I think all of us need to take just a moment to think about that because we, we take freedom for granted, don't we? But I want to thank all those that serve for their service to this country. And I pray that we never forget, never ever forget, those that gave of their lives and gave of their time for that freedom that we so richly enjoy. But again, I want to welcome you to our morning worship service on this Memorial Day weekend. I pray that you'll have a, a weekend this, this time full of Maybe time with your family or maybe time of just getting out and enjoying the nature and, and everything around us. But also never forgetting who God is and who God can be in your life. So I just want to welcome you to our morning worship service. This morning as we start our service I'd like to pray and then we'll say our verse of the month which is found in John chapter 16 
verse 33. But as we, we look at this and we think about this, you know how that we serve a risen Savior that someday is coming back for us. But let's have a word of prayer this morning. Dear Holy Father, we thank you for this day. I thank you for our time together. We pray for this day as we go through this weekend we call Memorial Day weekend. And it's that time where we remember the men and women that served this country, the men and women that gave of their time and gave of their lives for the freedom, the freedom that each and every one of us had, have, and we praise you for that freedom that we can enjoy today. I also want to remember today those that have passed on before us, and many of us can think of those very special people in our lives that have passed on before us. And dear Lord, we just pray as we remember them, and, and it's a time of just uh, remembering what they did for our lives and how they led and guided in our lives, dear Lord. We just praise you for that. And we thank you, dear Lord, for all those memories, those fond memories that we can have and continue to have. But dear Lord, help us never ever to forget who you are and who you can be in our lives and not forget what you have done for us. And dear Lord, we come to you today, we pray for those with very special prayer requests. We think of the unspoken requests that many have and many have in our church family, dear Lord. We just ask for your guidance there. We pray as you know each and everything that we know, each and everything that's on our mind. Dear Lord, that you would guide in the lives of those, that they would continue to look to you for guidance and direction. We pray for our service this morning, dear Lord, that it would be a, a, a morning service of challenge, but not only challenge, but encouragement to each and every one of us because we serve a, a risen Christ that, that someday is coming back for us. And dear Lord, we just pray for this morning service. We ask for continued guidance in our service, and dear Lord, we just pray for and thank you for all those that are watching and listening this morning. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name, amen. Just before we, we do our verse of the month, I, I would like to encourage you and be praying our upcoming VBS. Our VBS starts June the 5th, which is just next Sunday. It'll be starting in the evening, and our VBS will be Sunday evening through Thursday night. So if you have children from the age of 3 through the 6th grade, we would love to have them come and be part of, of this year's VBS. Zoomerang is what it's called. And uh, we just enjoy that time as we enjoy each and every time that we have to minister to children. We'll also be having an adult VBS, which will be about an hour, hour and 15 minutes in length during our time. Our, our time starts at 6.15 each and every night. Our Bible school starts. And it will end around 8.30. So please be praying for that. But if you're a child and, and you're, you're bringing a child and you're staying as an adult, we'd love to have you come and stay and be part of our, our time together, our VBS. It will be for the adults about an hour. And, and for the children, it's from 6.15 to 8.30. So we would love to have you come and be part of the Mount Carmel Church VBS this year, Zoomerang which even in its voice makes it sound exciting and is exciting as we learn more about God's love for us. But as we look at this week, just what creation is all about and how that God made each and every one of us very unique. But we encourage you to come uh, to, to June 5th. Well, also June 5th in the morning is our graduation. As we celebrate the graduates of our church, we have four graduates this year. And we're just praising God for each and every graduate. So a uh, lot coming, happening uh, tonight at 5 o'clock. We're having our, our uh, service outside with a picnic. And you're invited to come to that also at 5 o'clock tonight in our pavilion outside. We'll be having an outdoor service and a picnic uh, for the first time this year. So lots of things going on. We'd love to have you come and be part of our church family if you don't have a church family that you're calling home. Let's say our verse of the month. It's found in John chapter 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in my eyes might have peace. In the world ye have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. John 16, 33 is a great passage, a great verse. Uh, our verse of the month for this month. We'll be doing a new verse of the month next month, but it's just a, an encouragement to us to know that he has overcome the world. 
and is there for us. Our song this morning is a song that, that many of you know. It's called Trust and Obey. And I would just ask that you sing out. If you have somebody with you, I would encourage you to, to encourage them to sing out. And sing out as we worship the Lord through song. Make a joyful noise for Him. Our song this morning is Trust and Obey. I pray that you sang out this morning as we look at this, as we think this morning how that we need to trust and obey. Obey what God's Word says. Obey what we know to be true and is true in God's Word, but have trust and faith in who He is. I pray that you sang that song this morning. Our service this morning for our time in God's Word is entitled, Soon We Forget. You know, as we look at Memorial Day, we look at the importance of remembering those that have served this country and those that have went on before us. But there's also an importance of remembering Christ. And do we remember Christ as our Savior? We'll be looking at Deuteronomy chapter 8. 
and I'll be reading to you verses 11 through verse 19. So if you have your Bibles, please turn to Deuteronomy chapter 8, and I'll be reading verses 11 through verse 19. Starting in verse 11, Beware thou that forget not the Lord thy God, in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full, and hast built godly houses, and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thy heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage, who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness." wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint, who fled thee in the wilderness and manna which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee and that he might prove thee to do thee good in thy latter end. Verse 17, And thou say in thine heart, My power and thy, the might of mine hand hath forgotten me this, this wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, and that he may establish his covenant, which he sware unto thy father, as it is this day. And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day, that ye shall surely perish." You know, as we, we see this passage of Scripture, we see a lot taking place. We see a lot happening in this passage of Scripture. And I want us to, to look again because soon we forget, soon we forget, not only those that have given us all this in our lives, but soon we forget our Heavenly Father. And today on Memorial Day, as we remember and think about those in our lives, how important it is for us to continue to look to the Lord and allow Him to lead and to guide in our lives in all that is said and done. And so as we think of that, we think of many different ones that in our lives have went on before us. But one of the biggest problems is we soon forget who God is and who God can be in our lives. So as we look at Deuteronomy chapter 8, and as I just read that to you, it talks about what happens when we forget. I really think that one of the biggest problems that the Christian faces today is that we forget. We forget that God is God. We forget that He is sovereign, almighty, and in control. We forget that Jesus is Lord, and that He alone is the way, the truth, and the life. I want to share a quote by Franklin Graham that, goes, that says this, The majority of Americans claim, claim to be Christian, and only a small percentage claim to be actual atheists. But the truth is, many Christians are what we would call functional atheists. In other words, they would never say that they do not believe in God. But they live their lives like there is no God. Truly, they profess Christ with their lips, but their hearts are far from Him. I want us to think about that quote from Franklin Graham. I want us to think about it for a second, or for a minute. You know, atheists do not pray and neither do functional atheists, even though they say there is a God. They, they don't really pray. They don't lift up their voices to the Lord. Their behavior doesn't line up with the lives that they live. You know, atheists don't believe in the authority of God's Word, and, and if we think about it, neither do functional atheists. They might say that they believe it's God's Word, but it isn't important in their lives. You know, atheists don't believe in laying up treasures in heaven, and neither do functional atheists. They're too busy seeking all their treasures while they're here on this earth, all those temporal things instead of eternal things. You know, atheists only live for themselves and live for today, the very moment. 
And functional atheists are no different. Now here's the difference. Atheists believe that there is no God. Functional atheists say they believe in God, but their lives show that they really don't. As we look through God's Word, you know, Jesus doesn't give us the option of riding the fence. You know, many people today want to ride the fence. They want to get as close to the world as they can and, and still live a, what they would call their own Christian life. But God's Word tells us many places that we can't just ride that fence. Because it, it tells us in Scripture, those who are not with me are against me. It also says, if you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out of my mouth. It also goes on to say, you cannot love two masters. You know, and all through the New Testament, it makes that very distinction. He separates the sheep and the goats. He separates the wheat and the chaff or the tares. So what we find is this. The functional atheist is someone who has forgotten God in their life. What does it mean to forget something or someone? We've all done it, haven't we? We've all forgot somebody or someone, and, and we forgot about them. And how many of us have said, oh man, I forgot about that? Well, to forget something or someone means that things or that person are not in your thoughts or in your mind. And that happens when other things are in your thoughts or in your mind. Those are other things or people that have taken the forefront or taken the front of what you're trying to remember. You've set your minds and your thoughts and your desires on them. And you disregard the thoughts of that other thing or those other people. And that's what a functional atheist does. Because Monday through Saturday, the thoughts of God don't cross their mind. The thoughts of living for Christ, and learning about Christ, and loving Christ, and worshiping Christ, is there only maybe one day a week, or maybe in thought it's there. But the rest of the week, their hearts are far from Him. Here's the thing we need to remember. This is all something we all have to be watchful for and watch out for. You, me, and all of us, soon we forget. And soon we're forgetting God. Well, let's go back to our text in Deuteronomy. And look at verse 11 again, because God says this to His people. Verse 11, it says, Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping His commandments and His judgments and His statutes which I command you this day. You know, as we look at that, we, we see this passage, and in other words, be careful that this doesn't happen to you. You know, take control. Be careful that, that it doesn't take place in your life. Take those precautions that you're not forgetting God. That's what this says. But look at the last part of that verse where God says, in not keeping His commandments and His judgments and His statutes. You know, how do we forget God? How do we forget God? How does that happen in our lives? How does that take place in our lives? You know, how do we soon forget who God is? What happens first by not keeping His commandments and His judgments and His statutes? He goes on and says, if you look at, with me at verses 12 through verse 14, Lest when thou hast eaten and art full, and hast built godly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thy heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. If I can, for just a minute, give you the pastor's interpretation of, of what I just read. What it says is, take care that you don't forget God, because when life is good, and, and things are going well, and you're comfortable, and, 
and everything is in its place and you're content with your place in life, you'll be tempted to forget about God. Because in, in other words, you'll not be going to Him daily for guidance and wisdom. And what happens is that a person becomes content with the poor substitutes this world offers. And their focus shifts instead of their goals being going out and making disciples. Their goal is maintaining comfort and safety. Instead of looking to see more disciples being made, their goal is maintaining what they've got. Instead of, of striving towards living a life for Christ or being Christ-like in their life, they start to live for themselves. You know, all of us, as sin-filled people, are born with sin-filled hearts. We are born with the tendency to forget God. But if you go back to our text and look at what the Lord has Moses write in verses 14 through 16, you'll notice that he reminds them of what he has done for them. Let me continue reading in verses 14 through 16. Then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led thee through that great terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and droughts where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of Flint, who fled thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. You know, this is the second way God helps us to not forget. First, he told us to keep his commandments. Second, and, and how do we forget God? Well, we forget God by not remembering. By not remembering he's done in our lives. And God wants us to remember those. You know... One of the best ways you can talk to someone about God and even share the gospel with them is by sharing your testimony and by telling them what God has done in your life. The question I want to ask today is, what has God done for you? Has He forgiven you? Has He delivered you? Has He changed you? Has He set you free from sin? We need to remind ourselves of those things, and we need to share those things with others. So what we see the Lord is telling us, He's telling us the way to not forget about God is to keep His command and continually remind ourselves of what He's done in our lives. But then we go on in verse 17, and He gives us another warning. He says, and thou say in thy heart. So it doesn't even have to be with words. You can say this in your heart. My power and my might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. The third way that we see that we forget God is by not watching. Not watching out for pride. Not watching out for that pride in our lives, the sin of pride. That's the sin of saying, I don't need God. I can do it on my own. I can make it on my own. And again, most people would probably never verbalize that they have pride. But they, boy, they surely are thinking it in their heart. And you say, well, I don't have pride. <laughs> You've already told everybody that you do have pride. Because it's in your heart, and our lives display what's in our heart. Did you know that in the New Testament, when it talks about Jesus, it refers to Him 24 times as our Savior. But it also refers to Him over 600 times as our Lord. You know, I talked earlier about functional atheism, or functional atheists. Functional atheism comes from putting yourself on the throne, putting yourself in front of God, making yourself a God by your pride in your life. I want you to be reminded today that you are not Lord. I am not Lord. Jesus is Lord. 
That means He's our master. He's the one who is to have control of us. He is our ruler. He is our boss. He owns us. He bought us with a price. That price was bought on the cross. And here's what Jesus says to us. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. If you turn there, Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. In the New Testament, Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 is the passage that I would like us to, to look at this morning. And it says this, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever, verse 25, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake, shall find it. What Jesus is saying, that we have to die to sin, and die to self. Take ourselves off the throne and acknowledge that He is Lord. You know, the purpose of Memorial Day is so that we don't forget what it costs to be free. You know, it's different than the 4th of July. On Independence Day, we celebrate our freedom. But on Memorial Day, we remember what our freedom costs. But don't think that taking one day out of the year is enough to adequately remember what was done for us. It's not enough. You know, one day out of the year is not enough for anything. If you eat one day of year, a year, of course, you're, you're going to die. If you work at your job one day out of the year, you're not going to have a job and you're not going to have anything. If you mow your yard one day out of the year, it's going to be a, an overgrown mess. If you bathe or take a bath one day out of the year, you'll be one nasty person. We know one day is not enough, and we have to continue to remember. We have to remind ourselves. We have to diligently maintain what we have. You know, this nation is the greatest nation on the earth, but it's not what it used to be. You know, what really inter is interesting is that if our nation is going to get back to what it once was, it's not about taking up arms. It's not about voting the right kind of people in, and it's not about legislation or politics. It's about what our text says. It's about remembering God. It's about remembering Jesus Christ. It's about following Him and obeying Him and living for Him. You know, God tells us in the very last verse of our text, verse 19, it says, And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day, that ye shall surely perish. So this morning, I want us to be challenged and to ask ourselves, do we live our lives as if there is no God? Or are we serving the Lord Jesus Christ? Are we serving Him? Or are we serving ourselves? Who is seated on the throne of your heart? Or are we functional atheists? Or are we following Jesus Christ the Lord? That's, that's the question. When we sing that hymn, I surrender all, do you really mean it? Maybe you're watching and listening this morning and you're saying to yourself, Pastor Brian, if I'm being honest, I'd have to say that there are things in my life that I haven't surrendered to Jesus Christ. And if I'm being honest, I'm scared to do that. Because what if Jesus calls me to do something that's hard? Or what if He tells me to give up something that I really like doing? Or what if He calls me to something that takes me out of my comfort zone? You know, those are all honest questions to ask. And if you're asking them, you might want to look again at verses 12 through verse 18 of our text. 
because it talks about what happens when we get very comfortable in our lives. It shows us that when we put God out of our lives, what can take place. But it also tells us what He has done for us. And how important it is for us to realize and to understand what He has done for us and supplied for us and met all of our needs. I would encourage you to again think and praise God that God is good. He is a loving Father and it's so much better to know Him and to walk with Him and to be in fellowship with Him than it is to be comfortable in this world. It's so much better to be in His presence and in His will than to have anything this world offers. Because this world is only temporary, and it's passing away, but eternity is forever. Do you know Him today? You know, as soon as, as we look at this, you know, soon we forget. I pray that you haven't forgotten about Him this Memorial Weekend. I pray that you haven't forgot about the freedom that you have. But that all came about by who God is and who God can be in your life. Remember that we were a godly nation at one time and led by godly people. We need to be praying for ourselves. We praying ourselves, not for ourselves, but ourselves, that we would be on our knees. Getting rid of that pride getting that I out of there and humbling ourselves before God and doing our part as Christians to remember so that we soon don't forget. But soon we do forget, don't we? Let's get back on track for the Lord this Memorial Day weekend. Let's close in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. I thank you for all that you have done for us. And dear Lord, we just want to raise up your name on high. We thank you for who you have been and, and what you have done in our lives and how that you provide for us in a very special way. I want to thank you for this morning, dear Lord, as we look at Memorial Day and Memorial Weekend and how that we can remember those that have went before us. Those also that, that have served this country and given us the freedom that we so greatly enjoy and are here today because of the freedom that was given by these men and women. And dear Lord, how that we were once a godly nation that has turned from you. But help us as Christians to not turn from you and not forget what was done on the cross for us and how that you are coming back for us someday and what you have done in our lives. I pray that this Memorial Weekend would be an encouragement to us as we raise up our hands and praise you for who you are in our lives. We thank you for this day, and dear Lord, we just want to lift your name on high. I pray that if there's someone that does not know you, that today would be the day that they would ask you to be their Lord and Savior by asking forgiveness of their sins and asking you to come into their heart and into their life. And dear Lord, we just thank you for all that you do. And we pray for Christians today that we would not soon forget. Because I think a lot of Christians today want to live as close to the world as they can and not be Christ-like. And you tell us what happens through your word to those that are lukewarm. Dear Lord, I just want to say happy Memorial Day. Dear Lord, help us never to forget who we are in Christ. And we thank and praise you for all you do and can do and will do in our lives. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I would like to thank you for watching and listening today. Again, I would like to thank all those that have served this country. To all the present and past service people, men and women. I just want to say thank you for the freedom that we enjoy, but also understand the, the freedom that we have from sin that we enjoy because of what was done on the cross. Thank you for watching and listening today, and may God bless.